Oh, good night, good night. If I'm short of breath while I'm talking, that's because my trainer fucking killed me. And I think I'm going to put him up on charges of attempted murder, just keeping it real. Um, but I wanted to talk about the transition, kind of what's next. I've talked about being, uh, hopefully I wasn't covering the mic there. Talked about being a temporal being, uh, a man that thinks ahead, that, let me put this down so I can play tug of war with this dog. She's like 90 something pounds now. I think I showed y'all this before, but anyways, I got to pay freaking rope with her and thankfully I'm getting stronger again. So Ugh, I can freaking deal with it. Look at this shit. Come here. Bring your ass. Ah. Okay, I don't want to hurt you. But I've talked about temporal beings. I've also, in the in the past, like an older video, talked about letting go. The art of letting go. The art of confronting and admitting your fears. And talking about things like, you know, um, you know, you ever been in a situation where you're in, like, you know, you're you're going head to head with somebody on the highway and they did they you felt like they did you wrong and you're trying to speed up so you can pass them and maybe cut them off or something like that show them what's for and then you just don't and then you just be feeling salty the rest of the day and shit like that but a part of what happens is you feel inferior because you lost right and you you don't want to accept that lost you know uh, a lot of the stuff that we deal with in terms of how we feel wronged how we feel bad about a situation whether it be a relationship or something just that just happened during the day is that we felt wrong like this person, you know, always, you know, always gets away with it type shit, blah, blah, blah. Um, we often feel wrong and we don't want to admit that that person wronged us. And there is no, um, there is no way to get back at them or anything like that. Right. And sometimes you have to accept that you lost. Sometimes you have to also accept that the karma that will be dealt to them, you will not be there to see. And that shit fucks with me a lot sometimes, man, because I'm not going to lie. As nice as I am, I used to be a very, very, and I sometimes still, and I kind of still am. I guess it's like being true to sign, Scorpio and all that shit. I'm a very vengeful fucking person. And it's tamped down quite a bit, you know, as I've gotten older and be fucking 37 in a couple days. But really, I, I, I'm not going to lie, man. Sometimes I be wanting to see this motherfucking catch every bit of hell and karma that that person fucking deserved for you know doing what they did to quote on me quote unquote me to make me feel bad or put me in a bad situation or what have you and like <laughs> man like you just have to get over it man like i've a couple times and i've talked about this especially when i lived in florida i had uh one time i was just driving and somebody cut me off you know or just like sped up and it's like a freaking corolla or some shit and i'm like I, I don't know what it is, man. Corollas and Priuses, I I really hate the people that drive those cars. Because, honestly, like, nine times out of ten, well, uh, majority of the time, just to keep it fucking uh, somewhat factual. A majority of the time, no motherfuckers just be driving shitty, man. Or be taxing them little freaking four-cylinders and shit. Um, or them damn hybrid cars. So, Acceptance. Accepting defeat, accepting loss, accepting that you, even if you do something, you may not be quote unquote the winner or you see it. And sometimes even when you win, what do you win? You don't really get much of anything, right? So there's that part. But really, I forgot what I was going to talk about again, Um, but the main point, because acceptance is a part of it. And a lot of people, they, they won't accept things because of, you know, ego. Sometimes it's their ego that does it. But... They, they don't want to accept things. They don't want to let go. Oh, I want to talk about transition. There we go. Um, they, want to, they don't want to let go, right? Um, so this space is going through a transition. Um, in terms of like, as I said, I, I think what's going to happen is the purple pill wars are going to happen. Those that are somewhat red pill are still going to be espousing some purple pill um, truths so, or purple pill flavored tinted truth, so to speak. And what we're going to see is the purple pill space grow to pretty much ostracize or, you know, people of the manosphere, the red pill, black pill space, 
they will see be seen as weirdos again. Um, and some of the things that we've talked about, you know, or weirdos are extremists, and some of the things that we've already talked about and um, put out there into the into the collective, into the consciousness of the society, will become mainstream. So it'll be, you know, it it won't be anything new, so to speak. There'll be new truths discovered. Um, this what we know is the manosphere, or this red pill space will, in some cases, some ways die, and we have to transition out of it. Um, I often talk about being a temporal being and being five years ahead. As I said, I'm returning 37, so I try to think as if I'm 42, right? What is the money going to look like? Do I want to have debt? Do I want to work as much as I have or I do now? Um, and it's definitely a no. Talking to another friend today, um, about, you know, a couple of things. And he was like, man, you know, I just put him onto something. And he's like, bro, this is like, this is actually kind of like, it's so simple. And it's just, it's, it, it, it's a, it's a, <laughs> and the guy's been making, um, you know, well into 200 K for a couple of years now. And now he's looking that he can double that, you know, at least add another 120, 30 K to his work or to his uh, income and everything. Right. Hey, 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 let me clean your place. Stop. So, um, wipe it back on me. So, what's going to happen, you know, is people like him, he's talking about, you know, his kids um, doing their clothing line. He's talking about getting into real estate. So, he's looking, and he's, he's a little bit older than me. He's probably at least maybe 45 or something like that. But, you know, he's looking to support that and support other people um, that, he, that he's with, that he, um, that he works with. I'm not going outside no more tonight. So that he works with, right? Or that his family and people that he cares about. And we have to be temporal beings. We have to also understand that this space is transitioning. Um, we have to accept that our time is over. I remember when my last high school football game, it was a wild card against Miami Northwestern, the Canary. I like the we used to like call them the Canaries, but they were some bad motherfuckers, man. <laughs> So Miami Northwestern, so I used to go to South Plantation High, and that year, uh, 2004 season, 2003-2004 season, we actually upset the district, and then we couldn't close the deal, um, and that was sad, you know, um, that was definitely sad, um, but uh, fuck Plantation High, um, <laughs> but, you know, we had, uh, we had a, a wild card game, so to speak, against Miami Northwestern, and we tried, we worked it, tried our best, blah, 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 uh, lost that game. And uh, I think they, I want to say they probably blew us out or some shit, man. They were probably just blitzing the whole time or some shit. But they, um, they broke us, right? Or not broke us, but they won. And at the end of it, the broken part really comes is like, that was our last game, man. That was our last hurrah. There is no, you know, some of us ain't playing football ever again. Like, school year's over, there is no next season. Um, I was lucky enough to have another season. Um, I, I would say I somewhat take it for granted, but I just didn't want to play football. I didn't think I was going to play football that long, but I cried, man. I cried. I, um, I like boohoo fucking cried. Like coach, I'm like, I could feel some of them feelings right now. Like my eyes is water because I have to, I had to leave the game and I couldn't, there, there was no, there was no re-entry. You know, the closest I could get to it was coaching. Hey, hey, do not put your asshole on my foot. All right, I'll give you petting. Um, the closest I could get to it was coaching, right? And that's all there was to it. There, I mean, I could coach the spring, uh, you know, the next uh, set of guys coming up, the underclassmen and coach spring ball. And then, hey, 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 get away from the phone. Um, I could coach spring ball and stuff like that, but there wasn't going to be another year of me playing possibly. Well, I got accepted and I played another two years, college ball and stuff like that. But then I quit. Um, I just didn't want to do it anymore. My heart wasn't really into it. Um, I did get some awards for some of the things that I was doing. But I just, I mean, my my football ap aptitude has never been high at all. Um, even when I was like coaching in my adult life uh, a couple years ago, man, I just, you know, some of the kids were just smarter than me, <laughs> when it came, especially when it came to football, you know. So um, I tried. I helped. And, you know, I helped some other kids in some other areas and stuff like that. But 
you know, accepting not, you know, accepting that there is no going back, that the game is over, that I'm out of the game, I've aged out, you know, the, those feelings still come up, you know, every so often you get them little flashbacks and it's just like, shit, man, damn, I wish I would have did this on this play and all this other stuff. And we really have to accept, you know, that the game is over for us in so many ways. Um, the game, uh, uh, the, you know, MGTOW, con- like some of the MGTOW stuff that we do in terms of how we talk about it. Because after a while, I won't say you look goofy or anything like that, but you're going to have to change the things you talk about. Because even Lil Wayne said this, um, he's like, my fans, you know, every so often I have to reinvent myself and say different things. Because I can't say the same things when I was, you know, um, 400 degrees, Lil Wayne. I think it's 400 degrees. Um, I can't say anything when I was just coming straight out to know you and all this other shit, man. Like, I can't say all that stuff. Because now I'm in a different, like, I'm in a different headspace. I'm I'm different, period. Uh, when was the last time, you know, think about, like, a Rick Ross or a Lil Wayne or Birdman or Baby and all these other fucking people talking about how they move packs and shit. Well, not Baby. No, not baby. Was it baby? Baby is the I think, no, Manny Fresh. Anyways, um. Anyways, like you know, uh, how can how many times you can talk about moving packs? Like you haven't done it in a while. Like you haven't done it in a while, and you're at a point in your life where, bitch, you shouldn't be doing it. Like you don't need to fucking do it if you're doing it. I, I'm a question your fucking thought process. That doesn't make any sense, and you should really rethink that shit. But. Y'all get the point, you know, we need to, we need to look at what's happening next and we need to transition the way we talk. And honestly, when, you know, people like BGS talks about, you know, um, unable to really transition and move some of the guys in this space to the next level of conversation, um, we need to start meeting that. We need to really start saying, hey, uh, I need to be in the headspace to receive the next mission. The next, like move to the next level. And it's not that you're so much leaving the space behind, but look at what you've done, the work that you've done. We have changed a fucking society, man, the way shit pe- the people are thinking. I talk about the spread of the logical perspective. I mean, look at what we've done, brothers, like for real. I mean, it, at some point you have to ask yourself, Is this all you have? Do you have anything else? Are you afraid of letting go? I'm not trying to say, hey, listen, I can leave this shit right now. This be my last video. Fuck y'all. I'm out. Because this is a form of expression for me. But when I look at my life in comparison to what it was when I first got in this space. The money different. The car is going to be different. The house. I got a house. So that shit's different. I ain't just got a room in my mom's house. Uh, my environment's different. I had a camera guy come over the other day, and I, I mean, I, I mean, I be having so many conversations, I repeat myself. But I had a guy come over to give me estimates on cameras uh, for my house to get you know things secure, and I wanted to actually talk about that. I'll probably make another video after this, maybe if I feel up to it. Uh, no, nah, probably not. I probably make it in the morning, but. Talking about protecting your space, protecting your bubble, creating a bubble around yourself. Um, and that bubble could comprise of people, environment, and of course, finances, you know, you may having your money straight and things like that. Either you invest in a person to take care of you, um, or I think Gabriel Ventura, I think it was Gabriel um, pointed that out, man. Uh, appreciate you timestamping that. Yeah, I guess that was a bit of a, yeah, I guess that was, what was a, a pretty decent takeaway from that video. But I talked about, Either you invest in a person to take care of you or you invest in you invest in investments so your money can take care of you or you could pay a person to take care of you. Like now I got to like, you know, work out a deal with my cleaning lady so that she can come in here twice a month and clean the house because I don't want to do it. I got enough things I got to deal with and stress and all types of other stuff from work. And I just don't want to do that. Like, um, I mean, she doesn't clean the bathroom too well, but whatever. Uh, So I'll probably just do that myself. But I got to do that, you know, and, you know, making that bubble for yourself. But the point I was talking about is that, you know, we have to transition 
to the next level. Like, things aren't the same for me. I mean, for me to even say I have a fucking cleaning lady, like, instead of just sweeping and mopping my own floors and paying what I'm going to pay, I think it's like 400 something dollars a month. I could probably get it cheaper, but I call her, she shows up, and I will pay the premium for something like that. But, to be very honest, I think this fucking dog is. She's like 10 months, and she's like 90-something pounds. But, to be very honest, man, um, we have to really be, we really have to worry about what's next. Because my life is not the same as when I joined the space in 2015, and even joined the black side of the space in 2017. And was dealing with the crypto markets and the crash that it had and everything like that um, up until now. Like, it's just not the same. It's just, I, I can't stress that enough. But to be very honest, man, like, we really have to transition and put ourselves, um, we have to transition and grow into our money. That's another thing. You know, BGS made that comment that really fucked me up in terms of my thought process. And it's like, my thought process does not match my money, my clothing and everything else. And some of the other things, I mean, some things won't change because I'm just comfortable the way I am. But then also like, hey, listen, um, get a trainer, man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, get some like uh, something to uh, get a cleaning lady, get people to do certain things for you. You don't have to do everything yourself. You know, I'm not, you know, if you just focus on making money, then you can get somebody else to cut the lawn and do all this other shit. You know, um, make sure you have service contracts and other things in place. We really have to grow into our money. We have to grow into our advanced earnings as we're going, getting older, as we're getting to our third, our um, late 20s, mid 30s, uh, or no, late 20s, early 30s, and mid 30s, and getting to our 40s. We really have to, you know, transition to say, hey, listen, you know, I don't, like, I'm not the same age, I'm not the same person. And I'm not making the same amount of money. Like my environment is different. My finances are different. My mindset is different. And if we're not really comfortable with thinking that way, then we really have to look at ourselves. Stop, stay. I told, I, don't do that. Um, I hate when dogs like sniff freaking crotches. Like I hate my freaking, like I hate when I'm like, dog. <laughs> I hate when dogs do that shit. That shit is annoying to me. But, and I know why they do it, but I'm not with it. But um, we really have to transition and we really have to think to ourselves, what's holding us back? Do we want to blossom and grow into the men that we talk about that we want to be? That the women have left behind or um, looked, at as, uh, looked at as poorly or secondhand or put them on the shelf in friend zone and stuff like that. Are we the niggas that they even, um, that are, are we the upstanding intellectual uh, forward-thinking, uh, well-rounded brothers that we fantasize, or not fantasize, but we project on women, uh, what women should want. And it's like, you know, if you're not that, then that's a bigger problem than the fact that the chick doesn't want, say, that, or what have, what have you. And that's a big thing for me. Like, <laughs> are we, are we like who we say we are? And in some cases, we're really not. Like, we're not these people that um, we talk about on a, in so many ways. We're not these people that um, will progress or do all these other things to, to really be out here competing. To get, not even a bad bitch, but to get a, a woman to say, hey, listen, let's start a family together, you know? And honestly, since they haven't been taught in some cases um, to be those type of women, um, we also have to look at, you know, are we the type of men that they would want to be with? Uh, again, I'm not trying to like be, uh, you know, like, oh, hey, listen, you know, there's a lot of, you know, motherfuckers want to talk about ladies and shit and how these women ain't this and they're not wives. But are you a husband, nigga? Like, I'm not talking about that. I'm really talking about, are you who you want to be? Are you who you've talked about being? Are you even that six-figure nigga? Like, women be damned. Are you a fucking dude that can run with other motherfucking elite brothers? That can think on the level of elite brothers? That can think on the level of brothers that talk about 
real intergenerational wealth and don't use it as a fucking fantasized buzzword like that one chick did on Keep It 100. You know, a lot of people fantasize about this shit and black family and all this other shit. And it's like, it's just the same thing as, it's just the same thing as about fantasizing about romance and love, man. A lot of people are still fantasizing about being that nigga and not being in the friend zone. And like, it's just moving from one fantasy to the next, but it's still a fucking fantasy. Are you... Thinking on the level or thinking towards uh, male-centric masculinity. Are you better? Are you a person that you... A person that you'd be proud of to hold up your head, man, and just look at a random person and say, hey, what's up? You know, like, whether you got the nice car, got the nice clothes, got the ring, got the watches, all that fuck shit. Like, you know... I went to a jewelry store the other day. I bought another watch. and I mean, I, I'll wear it. I just like buying the fucking Blue Angels collection. Um, of the, the Citizen Blue Angels collection. I love that fucking collection. It's beautiful. Um, and I was like, hey, listen. I want to start talking about a Rolex. And my friend, he's into like, you know, the Rolex Milgoss and stuff like that. Or no, he's into the Rolexes. I like the Rolex Milgoss. Um, I think M-I-L-G-A-U-S. S maybe Mil guys. I forgot what it means, but it's supposed to be good for like doctors that are work with X ray uh, machines or some shit like that. It's not like it's impervious to the the magnetic forces. Um, I don't know. It just looks fucking nice, but it looks it's expensive, but it doesn't look quote unquote expensive. You know what I mean? Like it looks like a it for me. It's a, a nice. hidden money type piece like it's humble it's conservative i put it like that it is a conservative watch uh most definitely but the price is not so much i mean it's like 14 grand 15 grand or whatever that what it is now and you know i wanted to talk to a guy about like hey listen i want to get into rolexes i want to get like maybe one at least one rolex you know i'm not trying to sit there and spend like you know 15 dollars 15k a pop on fucking watches and shit but i, I probably want to get one rolex at some point and um, I look at me moving from, like, say, a citizen, even though I wear, like, this fucking Fitbit thing for the heart rate monitor. I look at me making that transition into a a watch like that. That's like a, a symbol of that transition, so to speak. You know, um, there's other things like just get, being a homeowner, <laughs> you know, that type of shit. Paying your fucking bills and shit like that or, uh, you know, having you know, six months in surplus and all this other stuff, right? Um, I look at that as one of the indicators of like, hey, you're starting to, um, you're starting to put yourself in a better position when it comes to money. Um, you're starting to transition into, quote unquote, your grown man, in a sense. And some people have different ways of looking at that. It could be that you have one or two businesses, they're running themselves. It could be that, you know, you have kids and those kids are happy, well-fed, growing, and, you know, there's no problems in sight when it comes to, you know, what you're providing and what you're doing, you know, blah, 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 I can go on and on, but you get the point. And I think that's important. I think that's what we really should be looking at it are those symbols, are those markers, so to speak of what we're doing and how we're actually moving forward and showing that we're moving forward, not to other people, but to ourselves, you know, are we the men that we talk about? And that's a part of the transition. That's kind of what I'm going, um, I'm going through personally and thinking about. Alrighty, I'm running out of words. I'm also running out of time. I need to go to bed so I can wake up in the morning and get some work done, get some reading done. I have a whole bunch of research and all types of other shit, and I got courses to watch. And uh, I got to try and wake up so I can go to uh, the gym and get my morning uh, walk in. The fuck was that? I got this dog that comes around the house. But anyways, um, with that being said, thank you as always for listening. I appreciate you all. 
um, love you all and think about the man that you want to be and are you achieving that? Are you doing, are you taking the necessary steps to really say, hey, I'm the dude that I actually want to be? As always, thank you.